sponsored by CuriosityStream. Get access to my streaming video service, Nebula, when you sign up for CuriosityStream using the link in the description. Seven years ago or so, when Apple first started working on the HomePod, they just wanted to make a great sounding speaker that you could drop anywhere in a room and that would sound great no matter where you dropped it or where you were standing to listen to it. They were investing heavily into building up their audio engineering team at the time and delving deeply into the concepts around computational audio. Hardware and software, tightly integrated together, Apple's forte, so what could possibly go wrong? Well. In the time it took Apple to bring the HomePod to market, the market had changed. Amazon had shipped the Echo with Alexa. Google had begun replicating them. And it turns out, Apple was bringing a premium speaker to a commodity assistant market. There have been a couple software updates since, but nothing that just set fire to the HomePod like in the early heady days of the iPhone, iPad, watch, probably even Apple TV. So what can Apple do now? How can the HomePod be fixed? I'm Rene Ritchie and this is Vector. Last year, in 2019, we got a couple of new features for the 2018 HomePod, specifically multi-user support for personal requests, handoff so you could tap your iPhone to switch your tunes, and live radio for all the online broadcasts. This year, just last week, Bloomberg's Mark Gurman rumored that we may be getting direct support for third-party music services like Spotify. That way, instead of having to preface everything we say with the name of the service or, you know, airplay it, you could just set Spotify or anything else as a default. Now, I don't know if that means a full-on HomePod SDK like the Apple TV or Apple Watch enjoy, but that'd be all shades of awesome. See, I love my HomePods. I use them all the time. Having ambient computing in the home is just pure sci-fi. All day, every day, I walk around telling Siri to turn lights on and off, open and close windows, play and pause stuff on my Apple TV, to look up spelling for words and postal codes and to tell me stuff from Wikipedia while I work. If there was an SDK, it'd be a phenomenal way to contribute towards getting us to that ambient computing, voice-driven future just so much faster. Because the HomePod looks great, it sounds great, but even beyond an SDK, it still has these quirks and limitations that prevent it from being everything, everything, all it could be. Fixing Siri, of course, is at the top of any list of fixing the HomePod. I've done a bunch of videos on this already and I've got more on the way, so hit subscribe and you just won't miss any of them. Suffice it to say, I use Siri all the time. I'm a firm believer that voice interfaces are a big part of the future of human-machine interaction, and that Siri OS is the inevitable AI layer that'll just glue everything together. And I'm super enthusiastic that Apple hired away John Ginandrea from Google, the former head of search and AI there, to lead Apple's new AI organization. And I think it'll end up being as important to the next decade of Apple products as Johnny Saruji's silicon organization has been to the last decade. John Ginandrea's organization is the one I'm counting on to deliver Siri OS, a mesh of hyper-personalized functionality that can move between our devices to always give us the best information in the most convenient way at the moment. But the longer that turnaround takes, the longer we wait, the more often our interactions aren't enjoyable and fruitful, but unpredictable and frustrating, the more and more scorched Siri becomes. The more and more the memes become the opposite of AirPods. The greater and greater the pressure becomes to butterfly keyboard it all, rebrand and replace it with something, anything better. And the only way to fix it is to start talking about Siri updates, not just to voice quality or feature sets, but to actual consistency and performance, and then ship them in a way everyone instantly experiences those improvements. And in before all the comments, I'd add increased international support to the list, which used to be an industry-leading point of pride for Siri and now just seems to be falling increasingly behind. But honestly, right now, the foundations just need to finish being reset before it makes any sense to build anything else out. I think I get why HomePod shipped only supporting Apple's own AirPlay protocol. Like I said, it was a premium speaker that suddenly found itself competing in a commodity assistant market. All Apple could really lean on was the sound quality. And to put that much effort into designing the hardware and software systems only to have reviewers and customers take them home and Bluetooth beam to them with all the limitations and degradations of that technology, well, it would have obliterated the only real edge the HomePod had. So Apple used Wi-Fi instead of Bluetooth. Sonos did the exact same thing and for the exact same reasons. No one wants their high-end box connected to a string with a tiny tin can at the end. Well, 
except for Google, who includes both Bluetooth and line-in audio on the Google Home Max, and Amazon, who includes Bluetooth, line-in, and optical audio on the Echo Studio. The very idea of Bluetooth support probably makes audio files itch as much as the idea of optical in makes them drool, but to me it all comes down to one thing, accessibility. Apple makes Apple Music for Android not because they're a huge and typical Android development shop, not in the least, but in part because there's an Apple Music family plan, and some families are multi-platform, and a family plan that doesn't serve the whole family is just a non-starter. And I'd argue, passionately, that the HomePod is a family device, and there will be people in families with a wide range of devices, and if Apple doesn't do the easy if itchy thing and just add Bluetooth support in for every device, it makes the HomePod just a non-starter for those families. Maybe Apple could figure out a way to make an AirPlay 2 service for Android that could be used for any arbitrary audio app instead, and better, but that would add a ton of complexity and overhead as well. And sometimes Occam just has a razor for a reason. If Bluetooth is good enough for AirPods and they're a bestseller, it's good enough for HomePod, especially if it gets it selling. And of course, on future models, line and optical in would be the dream for just about anyone dying to hear their room-filling computational vinyl as well. The most popular, the best-selling smart speakers aren't the big, multi-hundred dollar, top-of-the-line, high-end, premium models like the Google Home Max or Amazon Echo Studio or, yeah, Apple's HomePod. They're the smaller, far less expensive Google Home Mini or Amazon Echo Dot, and Apple still doesn't have anything in that category. The company that gave us the iPod and iPod Mini, eventually Nano, the Mac Mini, the iPad Mini, we even have two tiers of AirPods now. But HomePod? Eh. I totally get why Apple doesn't play the netbook game. They'd rather not compete in a market segment at all than compete in a completely commoditized market where the most important feature is cheap. There's just no brand loyalty in it. But as the iPod Mini and Nano showed, and the iPad Mini and Mac Mini still show, there are markets for smaller and less expensive versions that aren't cheap as in commodity. Now, I hate it as much as the next person when bloggers, podcasters, and YouTubers just trample over Apple's market research and spend all their money, especially when Apple's the one with all the data. But it took some good old-fashioned media prodding and pushing to get Apple into the iPad Mini market to begin with. So, I'm hoping more prodding can get them to at least re-examine the HomePod mini market as well. And I'll just say this plainly, there is no way in hell I'd ever put an Amazon or Google microphone in my house, much less any kid's room. I'd burn the whole place to the ground first. There is just absolutely no alignment of privacy or interest there at all, whatsoever, point final. But I do want that functionality, so I'm left with the HomePod. And a HomePod mini would mean I could have that functionality. Kids could have that functionality, and not just in smaller places, but more places, more rooms. And add a dock to it so I could just slap on an iPhone or iPad, including that $329 10.2-inch iPad, and it wouldn't just compete with other mini dot speakers, but with the show hubs as well. Fantastic bedside in the kitchen or anywhere for video and FaceTime. About the only other thing I'd still want is a dedicated Apple TV mode, so I could not just pair them as an AirPlay source, but set them up as a permanent soundbar if that's what I want. And don't get me wrong, a full-on theater pod would be even better, but the dedicated Apple TV mode would be enough to again expand the jobs the HomePod could get done. Also that, one day, it could become full-on Jarvis, Friday, Edith, which is exactly what I want, especially after watching it all unfold again in Dave Wiskus' new film all about the AI and voice-enabled sunglasses worn by Tony Stark in all the Marvel Cinematic Universe movies. And he was able to make Edith because of Nebula, the video platform built by and for independent creators like Legal Eagle, Tirzu, Low Spec Gamer, Wendover, Sarah Z, Twelve Tone, and yours truly. We're building Nebula because we want a place where creators can try out new content ideas that might not work on YouTube, like Edith. And because it now comes bundled with CuriosityStream, you also get access to thousands of documentaries and series, like Trek Nation, from the son of the creator of Star Trek that explores his famous father's creation and the popularization of concepts like ambient, computer. By signing up for just $19.99, yeah, for the whole year, you won't just be helping me out, but the entire educational community. 
Go to curiositystream.com slash vector for unlimited access to the world's top documentaries and nonfiction series. And now, Nebula as well. And to the promo code vector to start your membership completely free for the first 31 days. Thanks, CuriosityStream, and thanks to all of you for supporting the show. That's what I'd love to see Apple do with the HomePod, hardware and software, to really bring it into its own and be hyper-competitive, even just at the higher end, and for those for whom privacy really matters, most especially in the home. And now I'd love to hear from you. Hit like if you do, subscribe and ring that bell gizmo. It not only helps the channel, it's the only way YouTube will actually tell you when new shows go live. And then hit up the comments and let me know what do you want to see next for and from the HomePod. Thanks for watching. See you next video.